Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. A lot of action from the world of motorsport this past weekend. So we are going to look at IndyCar and Indy NXT from St. Louis. The last pre-playoff race in NASCAR from Daytona. Formula 2 at Zandvoort. European Le Mans from Aragon, Spain. British touring cars on the Donington Park Grand Prix track. TCR World Tour in Argentina and Super GT from Suzuka, Japan. So with all that to get through, make sure you subscribe and let's jump into the video. IndyCar first and the St. Louis race was the final oval of 2023. Benjamin Pedersen was spun round right at the start by Ed Carpenter. So just as the race went green, it went yellow. This was a fairly quiet oval race. The Penske's didn't charge off never to be seen again. There were no endless yellow periods for crashes like you see in NASCAR. This was a very strategic race. Who could make the tyres last and push their fuel saving to the max and try and drag out a free stop race? There wasn't a second yellow period till Takuma Sato crashed around the halfway point. Dixon and New Garden led the way, but they were on different strategies to some of the drivers behind them. One of those was Marcus Ericsson, who had a terrible weekend up to this point. Between crashing into a spinning wheel power in practice and a problem in the pit lane, he made an amazing recovery into the top 10 and of the top runners on the other strategy. A lot of focus was on Joseph Newgarden and if he could take a clean sweep of oval victories in 2023, that came to an end when he made contact with the wall. No yellow flags though, so Scott Dixon was free to take yet another win. A brilliant win on a tight fuel strategy. Keeps Dixon in the mix for the title but Alex Palau just has to be sensible with two races left. Shout out to David Malukas as well, a good podium result for him. Not the best IndyCar race ever but intriguing enough to keep me invested. In the NXT, also from St. Louis and also nearing the end of the championship, can anyone catch the Dane running away with the title? Well, Rasmussen led but lost the lead to Hunter McElroy after he was held up by Jamie Chadwick, who he was trying to lap. She became the villain of her own show. Rasmussen retook the lead after McElroy was held up by Rasmus Lind, so the backmarkers played a major role in this race. James Rowe didn't have much of an impact on the race, but he did with the wall, bringing out a yellow with 10 laps left. The end of the race was very fun to watch, some good battles, especially between Abel and Frost, but Rasmussen wins again and has a big lead with just three races left. So NASCAR from Daytona brought an end to the regular season, a surprisingly clean race until Ryan Blaney got turned into the wall at the end of stage two. A big impact, he was out. It was a big crash, but not the biggest. Ryan Priest got launched into the infield and went over and over and over in a very scary crash that happily Priest walked away from. Christopher Boucher won the race, his third win in the last five races, and now we have the 16 participants for the playoffs. No big shocks missing out, and God knows he'll be champion. Formula 2 was racing at Zanvor alongside their Formula 1 older brother. It was very wet in the Netherlands for the sprint race, which was quickly red flagged with two Campos cars getting very familiar with each other. Boschong on top of Miney, with Jack Crawford caught up as well and a lot of damage done. Even the safety car light was taken out. And with that, the weather was not improving, so race one was cancelled. So, the feature race then. Chaos at the start, as a lot of the grid were not prepared for the damp first corner. Frederick Kvesti spun, the sure hit Behrman, and Jack Doohan spun before he even got to the line. Safety car right away, and Vesti's title hopes were damaged. After the safety car, Ayumu Iwaza hit Kushmini, but both continued with damage. Teipu Chair was in the perfect position. His rivals had all the issues, and he jumped everyone in the pits. He should have been the leader once everyone pitted, but then he crashed. Something that cost him the title in 2022. Now he had done it again and given Vesti a major opportunity. Unbelievably, Frederick Vesti was soon to join him on the sidelines with two missing back wheels. I've never seen anything like it. Prima should be fined into non-existence. Vesti was understandably angry. He could have got the lead in the championship back. Poucher did look injured. Hopefully he was just winded, but it was a nasty crash. So with all that craziness down, we still had three quarters of the race to go. After the safety car went in, we got more crazy. Victor Martins made contact with Oli Behrman, putting an end to Prima's terrible weekend. The race calmed down with Clement Novelak in the Trident pulling a decent lead. He took his first win since 2019 in British Formula 3. Victor Martins was the highest in the championship to score, two points for ninth. The top four all retired or had issues, so Boucher still has a slim lead over Vesti with two rounds left. British touring cars now and three races at the longer Donington Park Grand Prix track for the first time since 2002. I'm happy to see it back. Ash Sutton is now in a dominant position in the championship and the others would need him to have a bad weekend if they wanted a chance at the title. Ash Sutton dominated race one, win number nine for the year. Ingram had to fight off Jake Hill for second and basically his championship well and truly over. 
and this race was tedious. Wet race on a track the series hasn't raced on for two decades and it was still boring. No overtaking, cars aren't even really that close. Only Jake Hill really made progress, just awful. Tom Ingram was penalised again and lost second to Hill and everything is pointless and they're not even trying to give us a reason to care. Race 2 was drier and still exceptionally dull. There was some good battling between Vauxhalls and Tom Ingram past Sutton, but the most interesting part of the race was when the recovery vehicle was out on track briefly. Although I feel we may have missed some action between Rory Butcher and Adam Morgan, given the state of their cars. Tom Ingram won, Sutton was second. Race 3 was the last chance of an interesting race this weekend. Dan Lloyd led whilst Tom Ingram got past Ash Sutton. Actually, this race was better, a lot more overtaking and defending, close battling and the title contenders were together in the midfield. We got a safety car after Jake Hill hit the tyre barrier and sprayed debris all over the track. Hill's BMW looked like a car from Mad Max, but it did continue. Daniel Robotton did the same shortly after the safety car, and he was less lucky. He got a puncture and was out. It looked like Dan Lloyd was going to take a first win for Team Hard, but the Cooper went wrong on the last lap, and Lloyd was out after leading the entire way, leaving a very lucky Rory Butcher to take the win. Mathematically, the top four can still win the championship, but I think Turkington and Hill might be a bit too far away. Sutton leads Ingram by about 40 points, so it's not over, but I think Ash Sutton will need a disastrous weekend to be stopped. Race 3 was good, everything else, blah. The World Tour headed to Argentina, the La Padera circuit, an interesting track. Look how wide it is. There's enough room for 50 cars here. Race 1 was terrible, 90% safety car. The safety car periods were long. The race was arse. Mikel Ascona passed half on the last lap for the win. Race 2 started with some chaos, Jan Elache punted some tyres, whilst others hit the wall or spun. So guess what? Safety car. Race 2 wasn't great either, Frederick Vavish took out one of the locals, and Nesta Girolami won the race in his Honda. European Le Mans from Aragon in Spain, a 4 hour race around a very dusty racetrack. Michael Fassbender getting punted off is becoming a tradition, and it happened here once again. Inter Europol have been very impressive in 2023, but Ruby Andrade was taken out of second place by Johnny Lawson in a GT Ferrari at the end of the first hour. Safety car, as other cars went off as well, and some recovery needed to be done. And the Ferrari was leaking juices, which also needed to be tidied up. The United Auto Sports car led at the front of the field for the majority of this race, and it was an entertaining but very clean race. Unfortunately, the end of the race came after a long full course yellow, and so United Auto Sports won with a 30 second lead. We are only halfway through the year, and there's still plenty of time for things to change. It's pretty close in all the classes. Finally, Super GT from Suzuka. Super GT has had issues with big crashes and cars bursting into flames. So the organisers at least wanted a quiet race this time. They mostly got their wish. Although the condo racing Nissan of Jao Paolo di Oliveira in the GT300 class did lose a wheel. A disaster for the team that were second in the championship. Toshiki Oyu ended up in the same place with damage a few laps later but brought out another full course yellow. Nere Fakazumi and Hiroki Otsu took the win and the championship is wide open with three rounds left. So that is all for this past weekend. My race of the weekend is the Formula 2 feature race. The weather played a big part in a crazy race that saw most of the title contenders in trouble. Everything else was pretty disappointing. Quite a forgettable weekend, really. Next weekend, Formula 1 and 2 are back at Monza, and we also have the final round of Formula 3. The NASCAR playoffs start at Darlington. The penultimate round of IndyCar and Indy NXT comes to us from Portland. The only other thing on is the start of the all-electric TCR Scandinavia series. I only mention this because we may actually see a Tesla race. Let me know your thoughts down below. Make sure you subscribe. Thank you for watching and have a good one.